How's it going, guys? Chris back here again with another episode of Historic Brawl. We are jumping right into it right now uh, because I kind of forgot that I was queuing up for a game to record, and I just kind of stared off in the stared off in the distance. Um, but either way, this is the Goblin Death I was talking about. We got Muxus in our command zone. He does Muxus things. Um, we don't have. Ouch! Poke myself. Uh, we don't have... It's weird. Making some goblins. Next year we can play a beetle back chief. Make more goblins. So the, the Muxus play a Skirt Prospector, sacrifice a bunch of goblins, get a lethal board attack. But it's not as powerful in Historic Brawl. Like, it's still possible, but getting there is the issue, right? Having your one-of copy is a little, a little difficult to pull off. I think we just swing out. I don't want to sack my treasure, because my treasure is what makes... Is what will make Muxus a turn cheaper. Like, at this rate, we'll be able to play Moxus on turn 6. Which, if we had drawn a land, we would have been able to play him on turn 5. But, I don't know. I've been experimenting with less heavy mana rock decks. And I'm beginning to think that might be a, just, a, just a flat mistake, you know? Huh. So I could Brothers Hood end here, and that would, uh... That actually cleans up kind of nice. Let's get ri Oh, well, Sis A will not die that way. Yeah, I guess you can die the normal way. Brotherhood's End is, uh, low-key pretty decent. I don't know if it's decent enough to get us through the... Hmm. So we stole Joda, a crow in war. Also, remotely decent. Uh, feels good to bully a Joda deck sometimes. Oi, not cool. Well, there's my fifth land, finally. Yeah, I guess we'll play one of those. the end of your next turn. Eh. Yeah, I think we only want to... Mm, that's fine. Oh, uh, some of our boys die in the attack, but that's what, that's what the boys are for, right? And so... It's a shame we didn't get the mad disrespect on Joda. Like stealing him and then killing our opponent with their own Joda. That would have been nice. Um, that would have been nice, but we did not get there. It might be uh, it might be time to revisit the original boogeyman of uh, of Brawl as a format, which was Brawl. I can take it. Like, brawl, play a brawl, counter everything that ever has been cast. Was one of the, uh... 
So we survived this combat. We muxus. Hopefully hit a mirror march bonanza and then profit. Yeah. Well, like any good goblin player, we are just leaving it up to chance. If we get at least one flip, there's a good chance we can just swing out and end the game. If we get one flip, there's a chance we hit a haste enabler, make it happen, but... Sure, we'll keep that one. We'll keep the real one. Wow. This is dumb. Thank you, Mux. <laughs> oh, I was worried there for a moment. I was really worried. Turns out if you mirror march a Muxus, uh, it doesn't matter what your opponent does. They have a Joda and 40 power on the board. Doesn't matter. All you need is a couple of good hits. I've never been much of a gambler, but, um, you know, Muxus is one of those cards that really makes you want to try, because he's basically a slot machine that's rigged to always win. So we're going into game two. I have high hopes, high expectations. We're coming off a pretty good high. Uh, the cast of Muxus on a semi-empty board, find everything you need to win feels really good. Not always going to happen though, so we'll temper our expectations. So Quietus Spike made it into this deck because I just couldn't find anywhere else to put a Quietus Spike. Like, it's a cool card. I want to see it used for something. And I need to figure out functionally how it works before I try building around it. Like, I think like a mono black and white shell is probably where it's actually supposed to be played. So it gives creature death touch. And whenever creature deals combat damage to players, at least half their life rounded up. Like, life manipulation on that scale definitely feels white. And then there are a couple of black cards that do it too, right? So next time we play Den of the Bugbear, and then we need Goblin Instigator into Warchief. Uh, Warchief makes our Muxus a little bit cheaper, so that is nice. Hey, we also got a Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord is just a way to win the game. Out of nowhere. Oh, I messed up. Uh, well, most of our curves three drops, so I should have played that mountain and played a three drop, but I forgot. I didn't know how to do it. It was scary. I don't know. Things went wrong. We venture into a dungeon. Yeah, this is the human elf ranger who has so many creature types that I'm just impressed. So he's like a half elf, which if you know me, I'm a fan of the... Uh, the Elder Scrolls series, and that series has a lot of half elves in it. You can never play as one, but they're like, they're all over the place in the lore. Half orc, half half elf, that kind of thing. They generally get a title, and I guess like the Bretons are kind of like half elves, but 
not really. They're kind of far removed from that kind of generational existence. No block. Look at that pretty goblin. Uh huh. So I'm gonna cheapen things up so that I can cast me a uh, Muxus next turn. That's it. Generally, we play commanders that aren't just like. I play this, I win the game. But Muxus is one of the few commanders that really does just feel like if you resolve him and he hits the field, uh, it's bad time for your opponent. And we're not going to resolve him next turn because they're going to fight down the war chief. Sad. And because he's a human, Kogla can protect himself forever. Also very sad. Here you go, opponent. I think I'm going to kill the Provisioner. It's uh, generating a little bit too much. Yeah. We actually need to draw land for it to... Um, he got Muxus now. So we'll have to make our land drop here and. Right now, Structural Assault would only kill us, right? Yeah. It would wipe our board and not hurt them, and it'd be very sad. is really tanking some of the decisions. I don't get it, honestly. <sighs> they might have disconnected. It happens from time to time, right? Okay, uh, so we're gonna play this. Uthka's Fury makes our little 1-1s one a lot more valuable because the damage that they, uh, the damage that they put on creatures isn't made to disappear. Uh, goodbye, Tireless Provisioner. So if they give it Indestructible here, it doesn't actually save it. There are a lot of green spells that will just give it uh, indestructible, but I guess they also come with hex proof too, right? You draw a land for a Muxus too, which is nice. Yeah, I remember playing, um, I'm pretty sure the last time we played a goblin deck was before Kamigawa came out. And we got a new goblin in Kamigawa that is also a haste enabler. We, we saw him in the last game, so. Like, the deck has been steadily getting upgrades, but it's because when it's one of the tribes, it's like the big, I guess it'd be like the big three magic tribes. Right, you have humans, because there's always going to be more humans. You always have some elves, and then you're always going to have some goblins. Like, originally, Merfolk was also in there, they kind of fallen out of favor over the years. Like if you're not on a plane that specifically has some kind of dominant merfolk presence, like you don't generally see too many merfolks in sets. Um, I don't know if Brotherhoods United has a single merfolk in it, or, or Brothers War. Dominaria United pro definitely has a merfolk in it. It's not um, not jumping to mind what card it would be, but there's definitely one in there. They're venturing into a dungeon. Target creature. Oh, well, that's rude. Uh, 
out today. I watched uh, My Hero came out today, My Hero Academia uh, today, and that's the show that I kind of enjoy, but I kind of don't enjoy the main character of. Um, it's fun, right? Like, there's a lot of interesting things going on, and I think the world building makes up for some of, like, boy, rude. Well, what are you gonna do? We need all of our goblins to make this work. Uh huh, what do I want? Probably a haste enabler. Uh, so the Lord is the last one that's free. So, it, what we do depends on whether or not they go for lethal here. Like, if they go for lethal, we can just block. And stay alive for a turn. It's going to cost us our whole board. But as long as we keep a Cranko alive, uh, we should be fine. You really can't go for lethal now. Yeah, so first steps first. A bandit warlord. Victory? It's a little sickening to me how close we get to the jaws of defeat and then the goblins just kind of crawl their way back out like it's a little disgusting if I'm honest because like we were dead to rights if they had just attacked like we would have had to put half of like all but Cranko in front of it and then this turn would have been awful but it's not now because they went for a longer game. And you'd never go for a longer game against goblins. Like if there's a goblin on the field. You try to end the game as quickly as you can. <laughs> I'm almost, I almost feel like I'm talking about like a shitty. Like a shitty anime plot about goblins. Like there were some good ones. I'm not saying that they're, they're all bad. But um, like the goblins in anime. They're kind of like that, right? Like, if you see one, you just kill it. You don't, no questions, eradicate the horde because the horde will crawl back out. And our opponent is tilting, and they're tilting hard. And it's fair. Like, that's, that's fair. If you do something this awful to somebody, you can expect some, some tilt on their part, right? Because they played a pretty good game. Like, they played a really good game. And then in the end, it just didn't even matter. It's the whole uh, War of the Spark trailer all over again. It's Linkin Park, man. Uh, on to game three. I do enjoy playing. Uh, one of my... One of my guilty pleasures is playing uh, these kind of broken, disgusting decks. Because on the surface... On the surface, it's not really, really fun, but it's kind of fun to see, it's kind of fun to see them do their thing, right? They're not fun to play against, but if you're, if you're the one doing the thing, it's a little more fun. That's kind of hypocritical to think about it that way and to experience it in that form, but In life, there are always contradictions, and goblins, you know, they can feel, they can feel a comp com <laughs> contradiction. Uh, 
opponent is uh is waiting. I think we I think somebody has desynced. Either us or them. I heard an explosion, so I'm guessing it was them, but I don't know. Draw it was Magic Online? Magic Arena? I say Magic Online. Man. That just gave me a flashback to Magic Duels. So Magic Duels had one of my favorite, favorite formats in it, which is Twin-Handed Dragon. Twin-Handed Dragon is an amazing format, and I really, really, um, really enjoyed it uh, during my days in school and during its brief life cycle on uh, Magic Duels. So Magic Duels, for those of you who don't know, was the, um, was the, uh, client was the magic client for a while it was trying to do what arena does basically uh it's actually how i got into um how i got into watching magic on youtube uh one of the creators for at the time who still makes content to this day was legend vd um he made magic duels content and some of his deck ideals were really really cool and he was a really just a uh, fun ideal type of content creator and I still do occasionally watch some of his work because he is uh, he's still active like I said um, so I guess technically that would be like an early inspiration for me um, but it was during that time that um, you don't put a hit counter on crank out that's bad I'm gonna steal your commander if you keep this up yeah, so it's weird to me that, like, the arena devs always say that we can't have four-player magic on arena when the earliest, the earlier attempt, Magic Duels, literally had four-player magic. <laughs> like, it was janky and ugly, but, like, it was fun. It was fun. I still played it. People were still playing it, and it's like, no, we can't do that on arena. Very sad. Very sorry. can't steal it because that's how magic works. Hmm. I messed up. So what you were supposed to do in that situation if you ever find yourself there? is you're supposed to leave the fanatical firebrand back so that when they block the Cranko, which is 1000% the right thing to block, uh, you can ping down the shovel. Root. <laughs> okay, opponent. Very sad, I know. That was just a very quick, brutal goblin win. That happens sometimes, you know? That happens. These were two very short videos. My last two videos were like 35 minutes and then 42 minutes respectively, so... Yeah, I feel like we're kind of do some short videos, honestly. Uh, so either way, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.